By the time you leave here, everything that shouldn't be, God is God has already broke the chains. All right. All right. I see y'all don't want to go along with me, but it's okay. Because I just took a quick back from where God has brought me. You don't know like I know what the Lord has really done for me. I don't have time. Get the book when it comes out. Thank you, Jesus. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give honor to the Spirit of the Lord in this place. To the chairman, Pastor Marcus McKnight. To the chairman, Pastor Marcus McKnight.
You're the peace when the husband thinks the wife ain't doing what she needs to do. You're the peace that he goes to. But it comes right back to the real peace. All right, okay. The name of one was Ham. The name of the other was Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Barren but expected. Benina had children. She got what she had. But Hannah was barren, but she was expected. Jumping on down to the fourth verse. And whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions, portions to Benina. That means he would give her a little something. But she was beside Peace living. Okay. Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But, but, but to Hannah, he would give a double portion. Barren but expect. He would give a double portion. For he loved Hannah. That told me that Hannah was the first wife whom he loved. Uh, although the Lord had closed up her womb, even though she didn't have children and she didn't have what Penina had, he loved her and he gave her double portions. And her rival her hate, her adversary, mm -hmm. also provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed up her womb. And the word is already blessed. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, and let the people of God say, Amen. Now, your seat. There are some things that you are going through, going to have to push your way into. Just tell somebody, I got to push prayers. I got to push prayers. And I'm about to lose control. Well. Don't push me because when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all he has done for me. My soul cries out, Hallelujah, I thank God for saving me. The Lord said that this is the season of prayers. Tell my people to declare praise, to praise me like never before. Push your way through and praise me. Just like the woman with the issue of blood, she pushed in desperation her way through and got healed. Praise is the order of the house because it is going to bring a mighty deliverance, saith the Lord. For the Bible says, pray, praise ye the Lord, praise ye the name of the Lord, praise him, all ye servants of the Lord, pray stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of God, praise the Lord for the Lord. his name for it is pleasant. Uh, now what we need to do is give the God of our salvation a hand clap of praise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now if the truth be told today, most people have wandered throughout their whole life without a real assignment of a design destiny. You will be surprised they are like high school students wondering if they should go to college and college students wondering what they want to study in order to fulfill their destiny. Many of us at the age of 30, 40, 50, and even 60 still don't know our purpose or destiny. Now, destiny is something that is to happen. The predetermined to a particular person. 
So we don't have the joy and the fulfillment and the sense of gratification that we need. We have collected pieces of success, accomplishments. We can afford to get our hair done, uh, wear nice clothes, drive a nice car, and even live in a beautiful home. But we still don't know our destiny. We often wonder as we get older, did I do the things that I was created to do? But aren't you glad that we serve a God that from the beginning of creation, when he formed man and woman, uh, he knew each one of our destinies. Uh, he's so awesome that he designed us with destiny in mind. When you know where you're going, you can walk in your own shoes. You don't have to walk in someone else's shoes. For the Bible says, be confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Uh, this is why we have millions of preachers teachers, bishops, etc. Because nobody, uh, because everybody wants to be, wants to have a big title name, uh, but nobody wants just to be a servant. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and gave his life a ransom for men. When you know who you are, and whose you are, then you know your purpose and destiny. A lot of us are saying that we know him. And a lot of us are saying that we live for him. But a lot of us are in the wrong shoes. Wrong shoes. They may fix your feet, but they're the wrong shoes. They're not the shoes that God gave you to walk in. See, because you think that is glamorous to be a preacher. You think that you're going to drive a fine car. You think that you're going to live in a big house because you are a preacher. But along with all there's some suffering that you won't go through just to carry his gospel. I wish I would have known when God called me like he did Samuel. And he said to me that I want you to carry my gospel. I wish I would have known what I had to go through first in order to carry the gospel. But I thank God that he chose me. I want to thank God too. That he chose me. When you know who you are and whose you are, then you know you have purpose and destiny. Just look at your neighbor and say, I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going. I heard Bishop James say, there are some people who like the idea of being married, but not the responsibility. You like the idea of being a husband, but you don't like to go to work. You like the idea of being a wife, but you don't want to give up your single friends to concentrate on your marriage. People are always subscribe to the idea of being members, the idea of being a pastor, the idea of being a preacher. But if it's not your purpose, you won't have the passion to push yourself over the obstacles and the challenges of life to do what it takes, uh, to do what it takes to be what you are called to be. All I want to be is the best Tanya Tucker I was created to be. And to accomplish my purpose and get my destiny that God has planned for me. Somebody shout. Uh, sometimes we are called to a small thing, like the little boy uh, that came into a big crowd with his lunch.
lunch of two fish and five loaves of bread. You know, it was a small fish. Came into a crowd of 5,000. Small thing. Uh, but it became the catalyst of a miracle that compelled 5,000 to run into the city saying, surely this man Jesus is the son of God. Small thing. Uh, there was a woman making beds. The little maid. When she looked up and saw Naaman standing there with leprosy, this little maid said to Naaman while she was fluffing up the pillows, she was still doing her job. She was fluffing up the pillows. She was vacuuming the carpet. She was in the bathroom washing the toilets, cleaning the sink. You know, doing what the maid, the maid engineer does. Yeah. She was doing her job, and she happened to be doing her job, and she happened to look up. Isn't it something that made me walk where the little maid was? She looked up, and she seen it, 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 it's something because David wasn't really even supposed to be out because he had leprosy. And if he was out, he was supposed to call out unclean. Because she was clean. Y'all gonna get it. Amen. I'll go where cleaning is. So if I go where cleaning is, maybe I'll be clean. If I go into cleaning, maybe I'll come out clean. I'm going where the little maid is. The little maid is. Uh, she was fluffy. She said, go see a prophet in Israel that can deliver you from your disease. Suppose she was out preaching that day, or writing books, or singing. She would have missed her moment in destiny. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, it's now or never. In the text, we have two women. One named Benina and the other named Hannah. Married to one man, Elkanah. Elkanah went up yearly to worship in Shiloh. He was a wealthy man because he had two wives. In his culture, the more wives you had, <laughs> the more wives you had, the more wealth you had. That can't stand today. <laughs> not with us women of color. <laughs> If it's not me, it ain't gonna be no one. All right. Y'all act like y'all want another woman in your house. Y'all know y'all tell your husbands when I leave, nobody. And I mean nobody. Better not be in my house. All right. All right. right. Y'all acting like y'all don't tell them, but you do. Hannah is the most noble and infernal woman in the body. We see the depth of her pain physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Hannah was desperate. Her story is told in more detail because so many aspects of her plight call us from the depths of her own pain. And it drove her to a place of recklessness, prayer, and weeping before the Lord. She abandoned her dignity forgot formality and begged God with all her might for a son. Weeping may endure for a night. Cried some nights. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Tell somebody my morning is here. Cried last night but I woke
another woman. 